Liverpool 4, Sunderland 2, Newcastle 5, Leeds 3, Cardiff 9, Coventry 1. And later I'll be giving you my marks out of 10 for other British cities. <laughs> but first, it's time to play an Only Connect quarter-final, so let's meet the teams. On my right, Rob Hanna, a company director who's been llama trekking in Dartmoor and has a tattoo of George from Rainbow on his left shoulder. Craig Element, a computer programmer with a degree in psychology whose cucumber came third in the Walsall gardening competition. And their captain, Gareth Kingston, a keen golfer with a BA in history who met rugby legend Barry John in the pub last night. Hoping their best days aren't behind them, they are the history boys. Gareth, you were in a pub last night, preparing, I assume, for the quarterfinal? Yeah, we went pub quizzing, so we found one pub which had a really terrible quiz. We bailed out of that halfway through and then found another one which had an excellent quiz and the added bonus of a Welsh rugby legend. Good luck. You'll be facing tonight on my left. Virginia Fasnidge, a National Trust volunteer who likes to cook authentic Tudor recipes and has toured Germany in a production of The Crucible. Gail La Carbonara, a photography student who has a stuffed parrot named George Clooney the Parrot and is the partner of their team captain, Tom Fasnidge, a teacher and beetle maniac who appeared on Going Live aged 14 asking provocative questions to a blood sports advocate. United by a verve for vocab, they are the linguists. Tom, you won against the Chessmen, lost to the Gallifreyans and then beat the Oxonians. Which has been your favourite game? I'd have to say, on balance, winning has been marginally more pleasurable than losing. <laughs> I'm glad it's marginal. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a close-run thing, but yes. We're going to start with round one. What is the connection between four apparently random clues? But the fewer clues the teams need to see, the more points they can get. History boys, you won the toss. You'll be going first. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Could we have the lion, please? I don't see why not. These are going to be picture clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Um, so it's odds, yeah. betting, odds, election betting, easily. Um, next, please. Odds, knots, um, odd, betting, ropes. Should we go next? What type of knots? Next, please. Second, two seconds. Hand, second. Hand, clocks. Clock. Clock, knot. Knot. Time. Election. Next. Next, please. And wheat. Three seconds. Three seconds. To get counted. Yeah. Things that you count. Not an answer that works, I'm afraid. So, linguists, your chance for a bonus point. Are they maybe imperial weights and measures? They are not all imperial weights and measures. What if I tell you that those images depict odds, ropes, clock and grain? Things you can go against. Oh, no. Against the odds, <laughs> against the ropes, against the clock, against the grain. <laughs> Didn't spot that one? Linguists, your turn to choose a hieroglyph. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. <laughs> Oh. It's the music question. Hey. Always good news. You'll be hearing your clues. What connects them? Here's the first. Our aspirations are wrapped up in books. What's the question? Our information. Next, please. <laughs> Next, please. of the artists are the titles of books? I'll accept that answer. They are bands named after literary works. The one you didn't hear would have been something from the Divine Comedy. OK. I suppose that's a book. It is. You can is buy it, it as a book. You can buy it in book form. They all took their names from literary works or books. What did we hear? We had Bell and Sebastian. Cecile Aubrey wrote mm -hmm. Belle et Sebastien. What else did we hear? Uh, after that was uh, The Fall. A um, 1956 novel by... Camus. Albert Camus. Yes, sure, Camus. Um, then we had Steppenwolf, which is... Herman Hesse. Herman Hesse. Herman Hesse, and you didn't need to hear something from the Divine Comedy, Dante's Divina Commedia. Coming in after three clues, you get two points. Well done. History Boys, what would you like? 
Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Andy Williams. It's not, it's not what comes forward. No, no, it's... it's oh, yeah, sorry, go on, next. next, please. Alice Cooper in honour of Groucho Marx. Oh, it's the Hollywood sign. It, it's, the, it, it's who donated the Hollywood okay. letters of the Hollywood okay. signs. Definitely. Uh, the connection is the Hollywood sign. Tell me a bit more. They've all donated it, it was the, money. The letter. Or sponsored letters. It was the, the, the reconstruction of it when yeah. it fell down. Alice Cooper paid for the reconstruction of the O in honour of Groucho Marx. That's exactly what it is. Well spotted. I thought you might need four clues to see it spell out wood. But that's right. In 1978, Hugh Hefner had an event to raise money. The Hollywood sign was falling down. Gloria Swanson had already arranged for there to be a sort of redecoration of the sign. But unfortunately, the O fell off and rolled down the hill. And then someone set fire to the L. So <laughs> that had all gone wrong. So in 1978, Hugh Hefner had an auction. And these are the people who paid for those letters to be refurbished. Good knowledge. Linguists, your turn for a question. Um, water, please. Water. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Next. Yeah. Next. Three seconds. They all begin with the letters P O R T. Tell me something else. Are they all Portillo or Portillo? They are all Portillo or Portillo. They do all start P-O-R-T <laughs> and then they all finish on a double L-O. <laughs> South America's oldest ski resort is Portillo. The Guatemalan president from 2000 to 2004 was Alfonso Portillo. An opening in Spanish. The noun and opening is Portillo. Okay. And the Enfield Southgate MP from 1984 to 1997 was the fabulously dressed and enigmatic <laughs> Michael Portillo. Gosh. <laughs> Need a moment to calm down now. I think we all do. <laughs> History boys, your turn to choose. Horned Viper, please. Horned Viper. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Susan could be anything. anything. Yeah, next, please. Suraj Prasad. Are these the first names of somebody who's done something? Shall we go next? Yeah. Um, there's no word playing there. Next, please. C.S. Lewis, are these middle names of authors? Clive Staples? Lewis. Yes, it will be, won't it? Yeah. Um, V.S. Naipaul. V.S. Naipaul, um, yeah. yeah. It's got to be yeah. Are these middle names of authors? They absolutely are. They are the S's in authors who go by their initials. You didn't need to see Turns, Thomas Stearns or T.S. Eliot. Who are the other people? Clive Staples Lewis. That's right, C.S. Um, Lewis. Assuming it's V.S. Naipaul. That is Sir Vidya Nepal. That is Byatt. his middle name. A.S. Byatt. And the first one is A.S. Byatt. Very well done. Linguists, we're back to you for the two reads. It's the last remaining question. What is the connection between these clues? Oh, I like this question. Here's the first. Next, please. Next. Next. Three seconds. Anything? Um, I need an answer. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, it's, you could just say Portillo again, put me in a good mood. It, it, it's, um, I'm afraid that's no, too long. So there's a bonus chance for the history boys. I don't know, maybe. Are these famous last words? They are not famous last words. Now, there is an extra clue, or well, I don't know why you'd have done it, but if you look at the word lengths, 
Mm -hmm. In each clue, the number of letters in the words, and stop me when you know what I'm talking about, go 314159. Oh. Oh, Ring pie. any bells? Oh, it's pie. pie. <laughs> they are mnemonics <laughs> for remembering pie. Uh, and the English one at the end, how I wish I could enumerate, mm. it will continue, pie easily today, may I have a large container of coffee, cream and sugar. <laughs> There's an alternative one, alternative English mnemonic for remembering pie, which is this. How I want to drink, alcoholic of course, after the heavy chapters involving quantum mechanics. One is, yes, adequate, even enough to induce some fun and pleasure for an instant, miserably brief. So no points there, and at the end of round one, the linguists have three points, the history boys have five. <laughs> round two is the sequences round. The teams need to tell me what comes fourth in a sequence, so they may see a maximum of three clues. History boys, your turn again. Could I have the lion, please? You could. What would you expect to be the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Jordan. Um, this could be um, countries on a particular river. Um, should we go next? Yeah. Next, please. Midland. OK. Are these going to be words? Uh, are these all words that mean the same thing? Should we go next? Ne next, please. Spiker. Um, are these... It's what Spike was it? Car. Yeah, it's a car name. manufacturer, isn't it? Um, JNS. What did they become in F1? Did they change their name each time? Oh, it could be. Yeah, 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 yeah. What is yeah, the yeah. most cooked piece of money? Is it, um... Force India yeah. or, yeah. um, Red Bull or... It won't be... Um, Three seconds. B-A-R. 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 Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, linguists, a bonus chance. No, I don't think no, we've got a clue, I'm afraid. Nothing. OK, they are the successive names of a Formula One team subsequently known as Force India. Oh, I said it, yeah. Force India would have been the correct answer. Linguists, back to you for a choice. Um, Twisted Flax, please. Twisted Flax. What would be the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. Three seconds. Fifteen, sixteen, ten thousand, eleven thousand. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So I'm going to show the third in a sequence to the history boys. A bonus if you can tell me what comes fourth. Go for that. 2015 slash 16, 10,500. That is the right answer. Did you know the connection? Yeah. It's the, it's the tax threshold. Their income tax allowances in the UK and announced for 2015 16, 10,500. History boys, you get the bonus and your choice of a question. Horned Viper, please. A horned Viper. These are going to be pictures. What would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first. It's like Panama. It is. So is this north to south? It, um, it, no, it would be south. To north. Depends. Which depends what the next flag is. Yeah. Oh, it could be flags of stars. Three, next, please. Yeah, and that's Malta. So um, two colours, um, red and white. Take so one, one motif. Next. Next, please. And that's um, laser, is it something like that? Is it number of points? Um, three cars. Got Panama Malta. Yeah. Uh, go three seconds. Um, the flag of China. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, linguists, your chance for a bonus. The flag of the Central African Republic. Now, is there a thing in quizzing now, when in doubt, go for the Central African Republic? <laughs> a little bit pointless, yes. <laughs> yes, well, we won't have any of that nonsense here. I do not accept Central oh. African Republic. Now, things do get a little nastier as we get deeper into the competition, and this is the quarter-final. What you needed to do was first identify which country the flags denoted, and then That's think the about words. the words. Yes. Panama, Malta... Taiwan. 
The country names overlap. M-A at the end of Panama begins Malta. T-A at the end of Malta begins the only country that begins T-A, Taiwan. So I need to hear the flag of a country that Andorra. begins with the letters A-N, for example, Angola. So no bonus linguists, but you may choose a question. Two reads. Two reads. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Next. What is this? Size. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bigger or smaller? Three seconds. A ton? Not the answer, I'm afraid. History boys, do you want to go for a bonus? What's go is it going down? Is it going keg? Firkin. Firkin is the right answer. They are beer barrel sizes going down in size, and a firkin, you know, that's all you'd have if you were doing a quiz, Gareth, just a firkin of beer, whereas I might have a hogshead <laughs> to kick off a Tuesday morning. So a bonus point for the history, boys, and your last choice of the round. I have Horus, please. I have Horus. And what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. One vine. Ivy. Next, please. A polo chuck at eight minutes. Seven or eight minutes. Seven or eight minutes. So nine or ten. Should we go next? Yeah. Yeah. Next, please. Send office hours nine, nine to five. Nine to five. So polo trucker is eight, nine. One, one what's one? Nine, one. What's seven. Only seven, isn't it? Well, I guess, but. Seven. Nine to five. So it's something like ten, is it? Nine, nine, nine to five. five. Three seconds. The Ten Commandments. Not the answer, I'm afraid. So, linguists and other bonus chances available. The reign of Lady Jane Grey. Is a perfect answer. And why is that? Because a vine is six seconds long, a polo truck is seven minutes long, standard office hours are eight hours long, and Lady Jane Grey reigned for nine days. That's exactly right. You get the bonus and you get the final question of the round, the water question. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next. This is something on my Next. No answer from the linguists. History boys, do you want to go for a bonus? Eris. For what reason? Because they are dwarf planets in ascending order of size, Eris being the one that was discovered to be bigger than Pluto, thus relegating it. Curses. Now, I must say, that is the one thing I was hoping you wouldn't say. I'm going to give you the point. We discussed this earlier, actually, with the, with the question editor. We had series, the dwarf planets arranged in order of proximity to Earth. In terms of size and mass, the International Astronomers' Union doesn't have a consensus. It's not been agreed. But we discuss it, what if somebody says Eris, and we have to take it because some people do put it in that order. So that is an acceptable sequence. I'm going to give you the point. I'm also going to distract you with a quote from the discoverer of Marky Marky, Mike Brown. I'm partial to fertility gods. Eris and Marky Marky were discovered as my wife was three to six months pregnant with our daughter. I have the distinct memory of feeling this fertile abundance pouring out of the entire universe. <laughs> now, that's one where we would say in poker, get it quietly. <laughs> At the end of round two, the history boys have eight points, the linguists have four. Time now for a spiky quarter-final connecting wall. Linguists, you'll be going first this time, so please choose lion or water. 
We'll have water, please. Water. You have two and a half minutes to solve this wall, starting now. Oh, there's six of them. Oh, there's six. There's buckshot, kale, esmeralda, chard, and orange. Okay. Oh, is that five? That's five. Okay, we're good. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Well, well, okay. Jungle, chard, wells, through. Okay. So we've got MPs who've been to prison. Okay. Archer, Hewn, Stonehouse, Aitken, leaving us with Bart, Alenska. Stonehouse, was that one Stonehouse of the... Stonehouse is an MP, but we, okay. we, might, we should probably... Should we do towns in Somerset? Yeah. Because yeah. we've got five... Have we got five of those? Yeah, we've got, well, then, we're down, then we're down to three strikes, though, don't forget. Yeah. Okay. 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 Three okay. strikes and you're out now. So, if... I won't do the four, but if this and this... and this and this mm -hmm. are MPs, what's these? Alenska oh, rings a bell. Um, Ethan from Lionel Bart, Bart Simpson. Who's Lionel Bart? Lionel Bart's a composer. Which other ones are in peace? Well, Aitken I know is, but one of these others might be, because these are names too, so we might need us. Yeah. We might need to try and get the three. Okay. Get the three strikes on that. We've not got that long left, so we can, I mean, we'll, well, we've got to, you know, pick yeah. that one. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. We've got about 45 yeah. seconds. Okay, well, should we try this? Yeah, go ahead. It's not fun. 30 okay, seconds so we're going to have to try goes. two more goes. Right. Um. That's it. You've solved the wall. That's four points for the groups. What about the connections? Tell me about the blue group, starting orange. Um, well, this is... They are, they are vegetables. They're sort of cabbagey vegetables. Yeah, they're, they're leafy, the big leafy green... Yeah, that's enough. They're leafy green vegetables. And the next group, Chard, Minehead, Wells, Yeovil. Are towns in Somerset. They are places in Somerset. And the pink group starting Hewn or Hon or Huchney. What's that? <laughs> sure he's been known by all of those names. <laughs> they are uh, members of Parliament who have been to prison. That's absolutely right. Terry Fields, a Labour MP and a supporter of Militant, that was non-payment of poll tax, oh, which I think was a sort of ideological yeah. statement. Rings a bell. Yeah. Yes, he went Rings to prison for that. And the last blue group, Bart, Alenska, Archer, Frome or Froome. I think they're characters in Henry James novels. So close, but not it, I'm afraid. They are characters in Edith Wharton oh, Edith novels. Wharton. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, oh, well. Newland Archer and Ellen Alenska are from The Age of Innocence. Oh, yes. And uh, Lily Bart from The House of Mirth. And Ethan Frome is an eponymous character from a novel. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, not so well. Don't apologise. You, you were very close. I mean... Henry James novels, Edith Wharton novels. It's not like you said they were spaceships. Mm -hmm. And you do get four points for the groups you found, three points for the connections. That is a total of seven. Time to bring back the history boys, give them a new connecting wall, 16 different clues, but the same principle of solution. You'll be getting the lion wall, history boys, because water's been taken. You have two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. Grimes and Herring are Benjamin Britten, as is Bud, as is Bunyan. But there might be more, there's obviously more. Okay. Well, he's a character from um, his Dark Materials. Yes, Yorick Benson, Sooty, Baloo, mm -hmm. well, and bears. Biffo. Um, We've Paddington got... Bear. OK. Biffo the bear. Where's Paddington? Oh, OK. Um, Winkle twins, Voss. twins, McWhorter. twins. Yeah. Yes, McWhorter twins. Three twins. Um, oh. Okay. Well, cycle through. Grimes. Oh yeah, Jedwick. Okay. Three strikes and you're out now. Okay, so we've got Sooty. Oh, uh, this is birds, isn't it? Sooty turn, Glaucus turn, presumably a red billed turn. Ivory turn. But well, what I mean, bun bunion herring. Bud. Um, Bud are all, um, are all uh, Benjamin Britten. So what else would be so Wingrave? Wingrave, perhaps. Do we want to go for it? Or do we... So Glaucus... Glaucus, Sooty and presumably Red Build are turns. OK, guess. and Ivory would probably be. You'd assume so, wouldn't you? So... 
and no, 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 no. Not herring. Red build. Red and so, presumably ivory. Onion, herring, bud, wingrave. Okay, should we go? Yeah. That's it. You solved the wall. So that's four points for the groups you've found. What about the connections? First group, I'm not even going to attempt to tell you what the first clue in the blue group says, so I just want you to tell me the connection. They are fictional bears. They are. And the next group, Grimes, McWhorter, Cray, Winklevoss. These are sets of twins. Tell me something else. Grimes are John and Edward, identical twins. They're all identical yeah. twins. And the next pink group, Sooty, Ivory, Redbilled, Glaucus. So they're all birds. I need you to be more are specific. They turns? They are not all turns, unfortunately, no. That's why herring was the red herring, not in the group. They're all gulls. Ah, OK. And the last group, Bunyan, Herring, Wingrave and Bud. These are all works by Benjamin Britten. Yes, they're eponymous characters yes. in Benjamin Britten operas. Yes. So that is four points for the groups you found, three points for the connections. That is a total of seven. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the scores going into the final round. The linguists have 11 points, the history boys have 15. So it's time for the missing vowels round, where this time teams can lose a point if they give me the wrong answer. We've taken the vowels out of various words, squidge the consonants up, and I want to know what the disguised clues are. Fingers on buzzers teams. The first group are all reasons it's fun to stay at the YMCA. Linguists. You can get yourself clean. Correct. Linguists. You can do whatever you feel. Correct. History boys. You can have a good meal. Correct. Linguists. You can hang out with all the boys. You certainly can. Next category, a TV quiz show blended with a non-quiz show. History boys. Mastermind your language. Correct. Don't know this one. It's University Challenge Annika. Next clue. Linguists. A question of sports personality of the year. Correct. History boys. 15 to 1 foot in the grave. Very good. <laughs> Next category, they mean a long time. Linguists. A month of Sundays. Correct. Linguists. Eternity. Correct. History boys. Eon. Well spotted. Linguists. Yonks. Correct. Next category, UK professional sports teams. time for that one. The bell has gone. It's the end of the quiz. And after a hotly contested game with a very good round four, I can tell you that the winners with 19 points are the History Boys. But very close runners-up with 18 oh. points, it's the Linguists. So Unlucky oh. Linguists. Don't beat yourself up about the Henry James. <laughs> Easy mistake to make. You've been a brilliant team. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that we have to say goodbye. But congratulations to you, history boys. You are through. Yes, this quarterfinal has been won. I think we've got the stirrings of a semi. Goodbye.